Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com. I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, the sad truth why some men act wishy-washy. And I don't know, is that what wishy-washy looks like? <laughs> um, really quickly, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if at any time during this video, the content resonates with you, please hit that like button. Lastly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. Midlife Love Mastery is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis, and if you join the group, I post, if you post a question in the group, I shoot a personalized video just for you, most of the time. Anyway, okay, let's talk about why some men act wishy-washy. Okay, so let's think about what wishy-washy is. Wishy-washy is basically uncertainty. There is some level of uncertainty going on in a man's life, whether it's a, that he has uncertainty in his life himself or uncertainty with the person that he's dating. Now, what's interesting, and this came up in my private group this morning, this idea that men will move mountains for the woman that they love. You know, we are just going to climb to the tallest, you know, the highest room in the tallest tower for the women we love, right? Well, let's think about this for a second. You've just met a guy, you know, five days ago. Is he supposed to move mountains for someone you just met five days ago or 15 days ago or 20 days ago? I want most of you to think about this because the reality is, is these days we're meeting total strangers. And what that means is it takes roughly a hundred hours of face-to-face -face time to build the first layer of trust with another human being. This is true for men and women alike. So this narrative that I hear that men are wishy-washy because maybe that they're selfish or they're narcissist or they're, you know, they're, you know, it's all about themselves. You know, I want you to think about this for a second because, and I'm going to share with you in a moment, the deeper causes of what causes some men to act wishy-washy is that this expectation is so grand. It takes time to get to know another human being. And the only reason why this narrative is so progressed is because men will, yes, I wanna say something, men will chase sex. Men will chase sex. I mean, we will, men will fly from Los Angeles to New York to get laid. You know, I mean, men will do things like that, but that doesn't mean that they're in love with you. Take, it takes time to build true love with someone to want to move mountains for them. So this narrative is, is going to set you up for failure. So the reason why I'm shooting this video today, because I'm reflecting upon my own wishy-washiness in my life right now. I want to be candid with you all. I'm feeling rather wishy-washy as I'm getting close to uh, Father's Day and I'm getting close to the anniversary of Connor's passing and my own birthday. I find myself in a state of melancholy. I find myself in a state of fear. I find myself in a state of uncertainty. And from a dating perspective, when someone, and I'm using me as the example in this narrative, and by the way, if you're not familiar, um, the reason why I'm feeling all this way is because I lost my 19-year-old son, Connor, in the summer of 2018. And while it's been three years and I've worked very hard to, to grieve with love, it still weighs heavy on me on a personal level. And I'm just thinking I'm one person of the millions and millions and billions of people out there that are suffering on the inside in some way, shape, or form based on a past trauma, maybe in their childhood, maybe it's an adult trauma, maybe it's they lost their job, maybe they're going, they've gone through a very tumultuous tenuous divorce. Maybe there's health issues going on in a person's life. Maybe they have elderly parents that they had traumas with that are going through, you know, the transition in their own life and they're dealing with their stuff, just like you're dealing with your stuff. And when we're trying to navigate our feelings and our wounds and our fears and our hurts, it can make the ground underneath us feel very unstable. And I can say this because that's how it feels for myself. And so my behavior one minute could be ex very excited to talk to a woman, and the next minute I could be in absolute melancholy. Now in my case, it's because of grief, but we all have some level, something within us that can bring us down. 
so understand that the sometimes it's not because someone is selfish it's not because they're a player it's not because they're a bad person is because they're going through some pain in their life and no matter what I mean and by the way those of you who know me I've written a book about healing emotional trauma not healing emotional traumas but healing on oneself I wrote a book called what the heck is self-love anyway what the heck is self-love anyway by the way there's a link below <laughs> by the way there's a link to join my group midlife love mastery as well why I'm sharing this with you is because I want to encourage everyone to instead of judging someone else's behavior as being bad this wishy-washiness how about understanding that maybe something might be going on in this person's life that makes it very difficult for them to open up to love and by the way this is true for women as well this is not singular to men this is what we're dealing with as a, a species of understanding human behavior is that Feelings can be very fluid. They not feelings aren't facts. We can feel high, we can feel real attraction for someone one moment and absolute fear the next moment. And when we're in fear, we don't want to progress something forward because we don't feel like, like I said before, the ground underneath us feels safe. This is why I'm such a big proponent of doing the work, the personal development, the self-help and spiritual work. And, and I'm sharing with you for everybody, I do it on a daily basis and it still can bring me down. It can still bring me down. And so what's most important in each of our lives is not to judge someone else's behavior, but to love on ourselves and to love others. That's my invitation. What does my t-shirt say, the self-love club? What does my mug say? Love yourself. This was a gift from a, uh, one of my members to love on yourself and to love humanity because the narrative of making men out to be bad is only going to progress more and more pain in everybody's life. I want to encourage men and women alike to start treating the opposite sex with a sense of, of what's the word I'm looking for? A sense of, of God, I'm really tongue-tied right now. I think, well, why don't someone come up with what I'm really trying to say here? Because even my, I'm getting choked up myself in this, in this conversation because I want everybody to recognize that most men are good guys. Most men are good human beings. They might be bad at dating. They might be bad at their emotional maturity. They might be struggling on the inside to express themselves. But it doesn't, this is just a human thing. And instead of judging men as being bad and men judging women as being bad, how about we just have a lot of compassion for one another and less judgment and blame for one another? Because when a man acts wishy-washy, we oftentimes take it so personally. And we, we then might look inward and say, what's wrong with me? When it could simply be that that person is feeling some sort of angst and fear. And by the way, there's nothing you can do about that. You could care deeply for somebody, but you still, there might be nothing you can do about the pain that they're feeling in their, in their life right now. Did you know the number one emotional health issue for everybody, most everybody, is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not likable. Imagine the weight of that. And I know, I, I feel it even for myself. As confident as many of you think I am, I still struggle with that because of my little kid that was picked on as a child, my little kid that was treated poorly by, my, by the kids in the street and I was bullied and all that stuff. And many of you have experienced the same thing or we've experienced adult bullying and things like that and that can wear on us emotionally. By the way, I'm rambling right now. I think this is what's going to starting to be the norm of my weekend videos. I'm rambling and I just want to say to you, I want to invite everybody invite everybody to look at human beings not from a place of judgment not from a place of comparison from a place of compassion and sometimes even good people do hurtful things but that doesn't mean that they're bad people and if we can shift the narrative from bad to a sh an understanding when you can understand human behavior you can predict what's going to happen next and then you can make better choices for yourself do you want to make better choices for yourself I hope you do 
And my hope is that we can let go of this narrative that men are bad because they might, the sad truth for a lot of people is that they're hurting on the inside. And I can say to you from personal experience, and believe me, I'm going through at this moment, right at this moment, I'm going through deep melancholy. And yet I want connection with another human being. I want companionship. I want emotional intimacy and physical intimacy. And I'm butting up against my own stuff. And I'm saying this is what a lot of people, and I'm actually aware of it. I, the other piece I want you to be here, I want you to think about this. I'm aware of this. Most aren't even aware of what's going on on the inside. And so their behavior is very confusing to them themselves. So just recognize, and I want you to look at yourself and say, have I acted this way as well? Have I acted wishy-washy because of fears and traumas? And if you said no, you're full of shit. Oops, I didn't want to curse on this video, but you are because human beings act this way all the time, men and women alike. So what's the antidote to this besides self-love, loving yourself, the self-love club, is to have love for self and love for humanity. Because when we come from a place of love, we have a greater chance of feeling inner peace and compassion for those around us. Inner peace for ourselves and compassion for those around us. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Am I just babbling here because that's what it feels like? <laughs> All right, I think I got my point across. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Please post a comment below. If you have any questions, please post a comment below. As always, if you find value in my videos, please share this with your friends. Please hit that like button. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, or a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.